Have you ever taken a glance at those intricate cable knitting patterns and thought, no way, that's way too advanced for me? Well, I'm here to let you in on a little secret. Knitting cables is actually easy, seriously. So grab your needles and join me as we explore the world of cable knitting. By the time we finish this video, you'll discover just how easy it is to knit cables and proudly hold your very first completed swatch. The first thing you need to know about knitting cables is that a cable is simply the result of working a single row of stitches out of order. This cable you've probably seen before is made up of eight stitches and 10 rows, and only one of those 10 rows is different than just all knits on the right side and all purls on the wrong side. These are the cable stitches, and to make the twist, you put the first four stitches on a cable needle, more on these later, pull them to the front, and knit the last four stitches in this group of eight. Then knit the first four off the cable needle. And that's seriously all there is to knitting cables. You're working a group of stitches out of order. So there's one extra tool you need to knit cables, a cable needle. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and for the most part, the right one for you comes down to personal preference. I started out on these cable needles and I would definitely recommend them for first time cablers. The curve here really helps the stitches to stay on the needle so you really don't have to worry about them falling off. You can usually find these at most craft stores and you can definitely order them on Amazon. I'll have some links in the description below. More recently though, I've been loving the cable needles by Lantern Moon. The finish is really nice and it's polished, so they're easy to work with if you prefer metal needles like I do. But the little cutout ridges make sure your stitches don't fall off. I ordered these from Amazon, but you can get them from a few other online retailers. I'll have links in the description as well for some of those. There are a few other styles of cable needles out there, and the best thing to do, honestly, is to just try as many as you can to figure out which one works best for you. While we're on the topic of supplies, there are a few more things you need to know. While you can technically knit a cable with any yarn you want, that doesn't necessarily mean you should. If you're gonna spend a lot of time working on those beautiful cables, you want to be able to see the pattern, right? So steer clear of low stitch definition yarns so those cables can shine. Unless, of course, that's the look you're going for. So a smooth yarn is best for knitting cables and animal fibers specifically, or blended animal fibers, will give you the best cable knitting experience. These yarns typically have a nice stretch to them, making the knitting out of order process a lot easier. You can definitely knit cables with synthetic or cotton fibers, but these yarns inherently have less stretch. So if you're struggling to knit those stitches out of order and you're using one of these types of yarns, that's probably why. When you look at a swatch like this or any cable fabric, you'll notice two main sections, the twists and the background stitches. These two work together in harmony to make the cable really pop. Let's get started on a swatch, shall we? Now, if you don't have a cable needle just yet and you're really anxious to get started, you can use a DPN in place of a cable needle, but just know going into it that DPNs are longer than your typical cable needle and it might be a little bit awkward. So first, find the swatch pattern link in the description. To knit this swatch, grab any medium weight yarn and needles that coordinate and either a cable needle or a DPN if you don't have a cable needle just yet. This is Malabrigo Mecca yarn, by the way, which is my absolute favorite yarn in the whole wide world. And the color I think is called English Rose, I believe. Either way, I'll have a link to where you can get this on Amazon in the description below. If you haven't tried this yarn before, by all means, treat yourself. Start by casting on 26 stitches and knit four rows for a little garter stitch border. This will help the swatch lay flat and not curl so much. Now the right side is worked like this, starting with row five. Knit four for the garter edge, purl five for the background stitches, Knit eight for the start of the cable twist. Purl 
purl five for the other background stitches and knit four for the other garter border. Now flip it and for the wrong side row, knit nine, four for the border and five for the background. Then purl eight for the back side of the cable and knit nine. Repeat these last two four more times so your swatch looks like this. And that brings us to the cable row. So knit four and purl five. Then slide the next four stitches onto your cable needle. Knit the next four. And knit the four from the cable needle. And finish the row with purl five and knit four. And you've just made your first cable. I mean, was I lying? It really was easy, right? So the repeat for this swatch is rows six through 15. Follow closely along with the instructions until you feel confident with it all. And to help you wrap your head around the repeat, you're simply working the same right side stitch combo and the same back side stitch combo. There are nine stitches between each of the cable rows and I like to keep a tally so I don't lose track of when I need to make the next cable row because it's really not easy to count these rows as it is with other stitch patterns. It'll probably take a little bit to get used to the tension during that twist, but your cable will get neater every time. It's totally normal to see a longer loop here on the edge, so don't worry about that. If you're already familiar with reading patterns, there's really only a few new abbreviations you'll need to familiarize yourself with when it comes to reading cable patterns. Cable abbreviations will look like this. The letter C and a number and either F or B, where F stands for front and B stands for back. We'll get to what that means in just a second. The cable we did in the swatch would be abbreviated C4F because we held four stitches to the front of the work. So the number is the number of stitches passed on to the cable needle and front or back is where you hold the needle as you work the next set of stitches. And so you might be wondering why that even matters. When you hold stitches to the front of the work, you get a left leaning cable. When you hold the stitches to the back of the work, you get a right leaning cable. Now let's talk about knitting cables in the round for a second, because knitting hats is definitely something that you'll want to try. Working stitches out of order will make it seem like your work is shrinking. It's not as noticeable when knitting a flat piece, but you'll definitely notice it when knitting in the round. It's best to make sure the circumference of your project is at least two inches bigger than your circular. Or if that's not possible, you'll want to knit on DPNs or use magic loop. Now, when you finish your swatch, it'll be impossible not to notice how wonky it looks, and that's totally normal. Cables will really benefit from a good wet blocking. Now that you're familiar with cables, this simple mug cozy is the perfect first project. It uses a bulky yarn, so you'll have it finished in a flash. Plus there's only one cable row to practice. When you're ready to take on a more substantial project, try my classic knit cable hat. Both patterns can be viewed completely free on my website, or if you'd like to support the channel and what I'm doing here, you can pick up the PDF pattern from my shop. I'll have both options linked below. Also, if you need more practice, making a few more of these swatches, holding the stitches in front and in back so you can see the different leans, well, that's a really great idea. Another option though is a stitch book. This one, for example, has something like 30 cable stitch patterns. I've had this book for several years now and it's still one of my favorites. I'll have the Amazon link for this in the description too. If you thought this was helpful, well, stick around for a while. I mean, knitting tutorials are kind of my thing. Well, knitting and crochet tutorials are kind of my thing. This channel is relatively new, but I've actually been making knitting videos for six years now or so. I've only recently separated the two channels. We have a knitting channel and a crochet channel and just to keep everything a little more organized. Along with these two channels, you'll find an entire website with free patterns, guides like this one, and other helpful resources at BeHookedCrochet.com. 
happy hooking, not happy hooking, happy knitting, and I'll see you in the next one.